<clears throat> Hi there, and welcome to part five of our class lecture on the French Revolution. Uh, in our last part, we ended with the execution of the royal family, uh, Louis XVI, and then Marie Antoinette. So we're going to move forward from those bloody executions and talk about a bloody war that is going to continue. So in our previous lecture, we talked about the other nations of Europe wanting to go to war with France in order to prevent the revolution from succeeding and prevent the revolution from spreading. And by 1793, the war begins to turn in favor of the French as they begin to win some victories against the Austrians and against the Prussians. Well, you can't celebrate too long because the other nations of Europe are also going to enter this fight against the revolutionary France. Great Britain, Holland, and Spain also decide to join the fight against the French revolutionaries and their radical government, uh, especially after the execution of the king and then the queen. This is proof positive that the revolution is literally out for blood and no monarch in Europe is safe. Uh, in order to put more troops on the battlefield, the National Convention is going to end up creating a draft as they are now going to... Um, conscript people into the French military, including women. So the French army by 1794, after that draft is put into place, is going to grow to approximately 800,000 people. Uh, so the war it continues to rage against these foreign powers. And this is what brings us into the most radical phase of the revolution, the one that maybe some of you are more familiar with. Uh, so we are going to have a radical phase of the revolution as the radicals begin to take control, led by Maximilien Robespierre. So we're not going to do a deep dive into Robespierre and his background. We're just going to say that he was uh, a lawyer prior to the revolution beginning. He finds himself um, in this uh, bourgeois third estate class, uh, been very active and vocal of the revolution. Uh, and finds himself now by 1793, 1794, as sort of the leader of this national convention. Uh, without an executive as a pure legislative branch, uh, we kind of need somebody to sort of step up and take charge, and that becomes Robespierre. Robespierre wants to create in France a republic of virtue, and as a radical, he doesn't believe that the Enlightenment or that the uh, revolution has done enough. Uh, he believes that the revolution needs to do more and we need to truly embrace the ideas of the revolution and the Enlightenment and go beyond just political changes to change the culture of France, to change the everyday life of France. Um, and again, we're not going to do a deep dive on that, but many things are put into place that change French society to bring in this republic of virtue. And essentially, you're going to have to force people to do that. And to do that, you're going to need terror. So Robespierre is a firm believer in this use of terror as um, a way to achieve this republic of virtue, to use force and terror to bring the revolution to the people, uh, and to do this and to protect the revolution from all of these enemies that everyone says are still out there, including Robespierre. Uh, he's always reminding us that there are enemies to the revolution ready to stop us at any moment. Uh, we're going to create the Committee of Public Safety. Uh, and this is where... Robespierre truly shines. So he sort of emerges as this leader of the Committee of Public Safety. And what is the job of the Committee of Public Safety? Well, their job is to protect the revolution from its enemies. Uh, and this enters into the phase of the revolution known as the Reign of Terror. Okay, so the Committee of Public Safety is a small group of men who are essentially running the government through the National Convention. And this brings us to what we commonly refer to as the reign of terror, that terror will be the rule of the day, uh, that we will use terror to enforce the rules, that we will arrest and punish and execute anyone who is suspected of being an enemy of the revolution. And to do that, we're going to implement the good old guillotine. Okay, So this is the radical phase of the revolution led by Robespierre and the Committee of Public Safety as we round up all of these suspected enemies of the revolution and take them to the guillotine to be executed. These aren't very good images. They could be better. Uh, so yeah, Robespierre said, hey, terror is nothing other than justice, prompt, severe, and inflexible. Okay, so Robespierre is not the kind of guy who's going to dance around things, right? This is um, 
if you say or do something that we find is against the ideals of the revolution, then you're going to be dealt with quickly. Uh, so terror is justice. Uh, where you can pause and read this quote if you'd like to from Robespierre, which is where part of that comes from. Uh, the last couple lines, though, yes, as the sword that gleams in the hands of the heroes of liberty resembles that with which the henchmen of tyranny are armed. The sword that gleams in the hands of the heroes. All right, so all this thing, all the stuff that we're doing is heroic. We are saving the revolution. Uh, we are, you know, protecting it from its enemies. We are heroes. Uh, they are going to establish revolutionary courts um, all throughout France to bring in people who are suspected of being uh, counter-revolutionary or being enemies of the um, revolution itself, enemies of the republic. Um, and this becomes pretty crazy because then it's just really like neighbors turning on neighbors. Uh, again, you can pause and read the description of this engraving. It's pretty cool. You can check it out. Uh, then we've got this really interesting political cartoon from England. So remember, after the execution of the king, uh, England joins the war uh, to put down the revolution. This is the point of view of the English. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to pause the video and check out this image. Uh, it's got lots of symbolism in there. Uh, and this is the British view of the French radicals here over in France, establishing this republic. Uh, so check it out. Super cool. Um, but we're not going to dive into it just yet. We are going to move on to, oh, so anywhere between twenty to 40,000 people were executed during this radical phase of the revolution, this reign of terror. Uh, again, that's lots, of, that's lots of people getting their heads chopped off. Also, uh, we have some other problems that are going to pop up, right? So a lot of the uh, reign of terror is taking place in the cities and the urban areas. Uh, we also have some problems out in the countryside. So the peasants who have not been a big supporter of the revolution since uh, the early phases of the National Assembly or the Legislative Assembly where they uh, closed down churches and changed and took control of the churches and changed how priests were selected and elected. Um, the peasants have been not very pro-revolution and now during the reign of terror the peasants are very much anti-revolution especially concerning like the war and being conscripted and being drafted so the peasants are going to actually rise up against the revolution itself so now the revolution has to fight enemies outside of France and we're also going to be fighting enemies inside of France so troops are sent to the countryside to put down these counter-revolutionaries, and it's kind of no contest, right? The army's going to come in with their weapons. The peasants are going to be there with their simple tools and very few guns. Uh, and about 100,000 peasants will be killed during these peasant uprisings. And you can see in this drawing from the time period, we have a group of peasants who are literally just being marched off to firing squads. So again, this is not like 100,000 people dying in battle. Yes, there's going to be some fighting, but you know they're here with their hands tied and they're being brought before these two firing squads. Um, so this is, this is the revolution going pretty far, right? Putting down these counter-revolutionaries very harshly. Um, again, these are the people that we're supposed to be protecting and fighting for and bringing freedom to, and now we are lining them up and killing them. Um, so that's that's not good. Uh, the Reign of Terror is super great. I would highly encourage you to do a deeper dive on your own. Uh, but we're going to kind of fast forward to the end here uh, and see how things play out. So Robespierre is at the height of his power. Uh, and actually, he's becoming too powerful. He's too radical. And essentially ruling as a dictator of the revolution. Uh, so again, when you give people that much power... Uh, they abuse that power, which is kind of why we had a revolution in the first place, right? One of the can, one of the reasons behind the revolution is that you had a leader who didn't have any uh, or didn't share any power with the people. And now we've got a dictator essentially running France, uh, carrying out his terror. Uh, Robespierre then, right, because who's kind of left to go after? Well, he starts to go after the other leaders of the revolution and has uh, a number of them arrested and executed as traitors. Uh, including his close friend, Georges Danton, who was buddy-buddy with Robespierre. They came up through the ranks of the revolution together. And one night, uh, Georges Danton just basically said, hey, you know, we just maybe should slow down the revolution. You know, not end the revolution, but just kind of, hey, slow it down and maybe create a more stable government. 
we can't have this committee of public safety running anything forever. Like we kind of got to go back to normal. Uh, Robespierre sees this as a threat to his authority and power and uh, quickly has his friends Danton and his supporters arrested and executed as traitors in April of 1794. So the other members of the government are looking at Robespierre saying, hey, um, if he's going to do this to his best friend, uh, what chance do we have? Uh, it's time to stand up to this guy. So the National Convention is going to turn on Robespierre. Uh, they're going to denounce him as a tyrant. He will be arrested and sentenced to death in the guillotine. Uh, during his arrest, uh, he's, there's going to be gunfire exchanged between Robespierre and his supporters and the people that came to arrest him. Robespierre is going to be shot in the jaw, uh, which will silence him during his trial. He won't be able to defend himself, which is kind of ironic because he was a great speaker. Uh, Robespierre will be sentenced to death in the guillotine, uh, and this will essentially end this radical phase of the revolution known as the Reign of Terror. Uh, so Robespierre is arrested, placed on trial, and then brought to the guillotine, and he will actually be executed facing up, not traditionally facing down like most people were. So cool, cool, interesting way for him to go out. So what happens after Robespierre's death and what happens after the Reign of Terror? We're going to have uh, a shift back to a more moderate form of government. So the National Convention is going to, yet again, create a new government for France. Um, people are just kind of exhausted, right? It's been years since the revolution began. Uh, we're looking at about five years of revolution. That's a lot of revolution. We've got wars outside of our country. Uh, we've got warfare inside of our country. We've got terror and, and executions in our country. Um, people are still hungry and starving and still broke. And we still have a lot of the same problems that we began with. And people are just kind of tired of the revolution and, the t and tired of the terror that it created. So people want stability. So we're going to create a government that will hopefully bring them this stability. And the new government's going to be called the Directory. And it's going to remain a republic. And we're going to create a two-house legislator. Um, and we are going to have those people elected by the voters in France. And we're also going to create an executive branch of five men who will enforce these laws. Um, and this is going to hopefully bring stability to France. And at the end of this revolution, the power of the government is going to be, you know, mostly in the hands of the bourgeoisie, the, the old top group of the third estate that wanted this power in the first place. And instead of the radical people being in charge, we're going to be much more moderate. Okay, so people who definitely support the revolution but are not interested in any radical changes or actions. So the government's going to settle in to be a bit more moderate. The revolution is going to essentially come to an end here with the creation of the directory. Um, and then in our final lesson, we're just going to do a bit of a wrap up, right? We're going to kind of look at where we've come from and where we're going. So we're going to sort of um, do a real quick check-in on what happens after the radical phase of the revolution comes to an end uh, and talk about what happens to France later on down the road. It'll be real quick, real simple, but hopefully it will kind of show you if this revolution was a success or not. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and uh, come back for the next one.